I object to being called a chess genius, because I consider myself to be an all-round genius, who just happens to play chess, which is rather different. A piece of garbage like Kasparov might be called a chess genius, but he is like an idiot savant. Outside of chess, he knows nothing. This was a quote from an American chess grandmaster, Bobby Fischer. In this quote, he suggests that he is only good at chess because he's an all-round intelligent individual from the beginning, possibly pointing to the conclusion that chess attracts already smart people. But then, you always hear about the many cognitive benefits of playing chess, which poses a question. Does chess make you smart or attracts already smart people? Before we can start talking about it, let's run through the basic rules of chess. The pawns can move forward once and take diagonally once. The rook can move vertically and horizontally but not diagonally. The horse moves in an L shape and can jump over other pieces. The bishop moves only diagonally. The king can move anywhere but only one space. And the queen can move anywhere. To win the game, the king must be checked, which means he is in a line of attack and he must have no other way out without being checked. With these main 7 rules and 64 squares, no wonder there are more than 190,000 possible games to be played. Chess is a game of purely the mind. You have to outsmart, predict and outwit your opponent to win. Since chess is a heavily cognitive activity, it's less a lot of people speculating that regular chess may make people better at maths, problem solving and general cognitive tasks. Some studies have shown a correlation, but some have not. In this video we're going to cover both sides and then end with a conclusion. The idea that learning a skill in one activity may better another is called far transfer. An example is becoming good at chess which then increases your mathematical ability. However, near transfer is when learning one skill betters a similar yet different skill. For example, learning Swedish will make learning Norwegian much easier. Vaskaviöra in Swedish and Vaskaviöra in Norwegian pretty much the same. The main difference between near transfer and far transfer is that near transfer is proven to work, meaning that learning Python may make learning C sharp much easier. But far transfer is a different story. Chess is not maths. It only has vague links like problem solving, which is a vague term in itself. So what did a study say? Well, it isn't positive. One study has shown that you don't even have to have that high of an IQ to be good at chess. As you can see, there is no correlation and the best player has an IQ of around 80. A two-year UK study involving nearly 100 schools also showed no correlation. So, is there any link in chess to cognitive improvements? One study does have some evidence that regular chess may improve academic success and overall cognitive ability, but the effects were only mild and the absence of a control group does not rule out the placebo effects. So, are there any benefits to chess at all? Well, there still might be. Intelligence is a very hard thing to measure. The best we have is the IQ test, which itself is flawed. It does not take into account something like creativeness, and there have been geniuses with average IQs. There is also a chance of the studies themselves being flawed. Like I said earlier, intelligence is hard to measure. Another reason why the studies could be flawed is that we know hardly anything about the brain. But we do know that if neurons fire more often, their connections strengthen, which means that chess must train at least some parts of the brain, right? Well, Maybe the reason those studies show no correlation is because chess improves something else other than pure logic and problem solving. I am a frequent chess player, and one thing that always bothers me about this topic is when people try to compare chess to maths or purely problem solving. In my opinion, those things take up less than a quarter of the brain when playing chess. What does the rest of the 75% take up, you ask? Visualization. Whenever I play chess, I always imagine how the chessboard will look like if I make a certain move. The most I can do successfully is 3 moves into the future. However, a professional could simulate a scenario 5 or 6 moves into the future. This is the core skill of chess. It's the ability to simulate as many possible scenarios and then choose the best one. This is why I think comparing chess to maths is a bad idea. Since you don't have to visualise 50 scenarios in your head, maths is predictable, chess is not. IQ tests cannot measure how good you are at simulating many scenarios in your working memory and then giving a verdict to the best one. Today we have learned that despite all the talk about chess increasing mathematical skills, there is not enough evidence nor enough studies being done to get a scientific conclusion. However, we now know that maybe chess has nothing to do with maths at all, but with simulating scenarios in your head, making chess not a game of logic, but a game of visualisation. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope that you learned something new today and got a new perspective on chess. Remember to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell button so you get a notification for my next video. So with all that, peace out.